Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Coming up today, Pastor Greg Laurie points out the physical union between a man and a woman has spiritual meaning. If you have sexual relations with a prostitute, you become one flesh with her. So don't tell me it didn't mean anything. No, it means a lot to God. You can't treat sex that way. And so when you break that union with your spouse, you have violated something very significant. And yes, there is a release clause given by Christ Himself if such a thing happens. This is the day when the lost are found. Experts say some of today's brides and grooms avoid what they call the death vow, till death do us part. Why make a promise that you can't keep, they say. So you may hear, for as long as we continue to love each other, or for as long as our love shall last, or until our time together is over. You can almost see the end from the beginning. Today on A New Beginning, Pastor Greg Laurie offers hope for marriages headed in the wrong direction. Hope that will restore them to God's plan. Let's read now what Jesus said to those who had lost hope for their hurting marriages. What he says is designed to restore hope again. Here are the Lord's words for hurting marriages. Matthew 19 verse 3. The Pharisees came to him, testing him and saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? He answered and said to them, Have you not read that he that made them at the beginning made them male and female? And he said, for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So they're no longer two but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together let no man separate. Here's a big thing that we all need to know. It's like marriage 101. But I'm amazed how often people miss it. There are two operative words used here in the text that make for a successful and happy marriage. And the words are leave and cleave. If you're writing notes down, write those words down. Leave and cleave. Verse five, for this reason shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So this relationship with your spouse is the most important relationship of all and it supersedes all other relationships. This is very important. For a wife and her husband, uh, they are to be the best friend of each other. Here's a key verse that explains that. Malachi 2.13 says, The Lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth, to whom you've been faithless, although she is your companion and wife. Companion and wife. That's interesting. It doesn't just say she's your wife. She's your companion too. And the word companion can be translated one you're united with in thoughts, goals, plans, and efforts. Does that describe you, husbands or wives? Now, some of you who are hearing me right now have been divorced and you're not feeling really happy at this moment. You're thinking, man, Greg, you're putting me under condemnation. Uh, I'm not here to do that, okay? Uh, because what's done is done. I'm sorry this has happened to you. Maybe you had biblical grounds. Maybe you did not have biblical grounds, but... I want to say to you, if <laughs> I don't want it to happen to you again, okay? So if you're in a new marriage and you've been divorced, let's do it right this time. I believe God forgives. I believe that God gives second chances. But let's not go and repeat the behavior over and over again. Let's learn from our experiences and more importantly, learn from the Word of God. Well, despite the fact that Jesus has talked about marriage, they still want to talk about divorce. Go back to Matthew 19. They said, yeah, yeah. It's almost like they said, yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. Here's what we're really asking. Why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce and put her away? Jesus said, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart's permitted you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. So I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. And whoever marries her who is divorced commits adultery. 
I want you to notice that he said, why did Moses command divorce? Jesus says, uh, he didn't command it. He permitted it. You have it wrong. Now back in these days, the attitude toward marriage was very liberal. You might be surprised to know. Divorce was widespread in Israel at this time. Consider the woman at the well. Remember her? Married and divorced five times. So it was actually quite commonplace. One liberal rabbi of the day known as Hillel said, and I quote, incompatibility of temperament was grounds for divorce. In this day, a man could divorce his wife for such trivial things as burning his meal or embarrassing him in front of his friends, or he could divorce her if a more attractive woman came along. Well, that pretty much opens up everything. Yeah, you know, honey, I love you, but this other chick's way cuter than you. Bye-bye. Really? Yeah, you could do that back in this day. So they're saying, yeah, well, why did Moses command divorce? Jesus is saying, you guys have it all wrong. This is not God's order. Our modern equivalent to this thing would be irreconcilable differences. This is the one we throw down all the time. Well, our marriage didn't work out. Why? Irreconcilable differences. What were those? I don't know, but it was those. <laughs> it's irreconcilable. Oh, well, then we'll get divorced. No, we're going to work it out. We're going to flex. We're going to adapt. We're going to put the needs of each other above our own. Don't tell me irreconcilable differences. And guess what? That is not biblical grounds for divorce. Every marriage will have irreconcilable differences. So that's not an allowance given in Scripture. Here's an allowance Christ gives. Number one, verse nine. If anyone divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another, he commits adultery. Now what does this mean, sexual immorality? It comes from the Greek word pornea. Guess what English word we get from that? Porn. Pornographic. It's a word that actually encompasses a lot of immoral behaviors, including uh, obviously adultery, also incest, prostitution, homosexuality. Why is this such a deal breaker? Why would Jesus actually cite this saying, if this happens, uh, God would permit divorce for this. Well, because when you have sex with someone, you become one flesh with them, you see. Paul even said if you have sexual relations with a prostitute, a hooker, you become one flesh with her. So don't tell me it didn't mean anything or it was a one night stand. No, it means a lot to God. You can't do that. You can't treat sex that way. And when you enter into that union with that person, uh, this is a very sacred union to God. And so when you break that union with your spouse and go and have sex with someone else, you have violated something, something very significant. And yes, there is a release clause given by Christ himself if such a thing happens. Unfaithfulness is grounds for divorce. But it's not only grounds for divorce, it's also grounds for forgiveness. And I've seen a lot of marriages survive this. I know it seems devastating when your mate confesses to you they've been unfaithful. Usually they don't confess it until you find out, though. It's devastating. There's no question. But it can be forgiven. And I've heard many, many stories of those who have forgiven it and are glad that they did. And let me just say to you, gosh, this is like I've seen this so many times it drives me crazy. But uh, girls are guys who get involved. And maybe this is a little more for girls. So I'll direct this to girls. Girls who get involved with some guy who tells you he's going to leave his wife for you, as they say in the East Coast, forget about it. <laughs> it's not going to happen. You think if you're having sex with this guy who's being unfaithful to his wife, he's going to divorce his wife and marry you? First of all, why would he not repeat the behavior with you, number one? And number two, why would he marry you when he's getting it for free? If he ends up getting divorced because of your affair, he's going to find another girl. Probably one that's not been doing what you've been doing. Because the very thing he asked for has now caused him to have no respect for you at all. So guess what? You lose twice. So don't go down that road. Uh, according to Dr. Lana Stanelli, author of a book on marital triangles. She says, of those who break up their marriage and marry someone else, 80% are sorry later. Of those who do marry their lover, which is only about 10%, 70% of them get a divorce. 
of that 25 to 30 percent that stay married, only half of them are happy. She concludes, having an affair is an invitation to an awful lot of pain and tragedy. Yeah, absolutely. So unfaithfulness is grounds for divorce. Don't go down that road. Don't, don't even play with it in your mind. With fantasies. Oh, you know, I won't do, but I'll just think about it. No, no. Because the first step to doing it is thinking about it. Love your wife. Love your husband. Be loyal to them. Be faithful to them. Because you go down this road, it's going to end in a lot of pain. And guess who the ultimate victims are going to be? After you pay the price, your kids are going to pay the price. And it's going to be a hard price for them to pay. Don't be so selfish. There's another reason given in Scripture where God will allow a divorce. It's in 1 Corinthians 7.13. It says, If a woman has a husband that believes, yet he is not pleased to dwell with her, let her not uh, put him away. But then Paul says later, But if the unbelieving uh, departs, a brother or a sister is not under bondage. Okay, so here's what he's saying. Look, let's say you're married to a non-believer. This happens a lot of ways. And I'll deal with this at another time. But, but you marry a non-believer because maybe... Uh, you both were non-Christians and you got married and one of you became a Christian and all of a sudden you're married to this non-believing guy or girl. And that brings stress in the marriage. Or some of you were not patient to wait on the Lord uh, for the right guy or the right girl and you just say, I'm going to marry this guy or marry this girl and I'm going to lead him to the Lord, right? That probably didn't work out so well for you, did it? And you basically disobeyed Scripture that says, don't be unequally yoked together with non-believers. But okay, now what's done is done. You're married to them. So now you're saying, yeah, well, I'm not really happy in this marriage and I met this really cute guy at church and, and you know, my husband doesn't care about the Lord and the Lord spoke to me the other day and he actually said to me, my child, dump the heathen husband <laughs> and marry the cute Christian guy, saith the Lord. I mean, it was even saith, like King James. <laughs> God didn't say that. Because in His Word, He says, if the unbeliever is pleased to dwell with you, stay with them. Now your job is to try to win him or her to Christ. Okay, but let's say they leave you. In other words, they abandon you. They walk out on you. They desert you. Well, according to Scripture, if that happens, you're free you, you don't have to remain in that relationship and you're free ultimately to remarry. Now, this really doesn't happen all that often. Most marriages fail because of selfishness. You want that person to cater to you. You expect marriage to make you happy, as I already said. And most marriages fall apart because people ignore what the Bible says and do what they want to do. Every marriage is going to be challenged. C.S. Lewis put it this way. Quote, people get from books the idea that if you have married the right person, you may expect to go on being in love forever. As a result, when they find they are not, they think this proves they made a mistake and are entitled to a change, not realizing that when they have changed, the glamour will presently go out of the new love just as it went out of the old one. It's so true. So, oh, if I marry him, it'll be great. And you get married and it's good for a time. And then, you know, the hard work of marriage comes into play. Well, I, did, I didn't know it was going to be hard. I didn't know, you know, he, he wouldn't do everything I wanted or she wouldn't. And so, well, I'll find someone else. And then the problems come in that one. Then it comes into the next relationship. So Lewis concludes, in this department of life, as in every other, thrills come at the beginning and do not last. But if you go through with it, the dying away of the first thrill will be compensated for by a quieter and more lasting kind of interest. End quote. Look, as you've been married for time, it's not the same as it was. I don't have butterflies in my stomach every time my wife walks in the room. You know, when I first met her, oh, I'm so nervous. I, I just, Kathy's here. What do I say to her? I don't feel that way anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> if Kathy walked in the room in the morning, hey, you know, making breakfast, oh, I... I feel lightheaded. I have butterfly. <laughs> She'd think I was having a heart attack. <laughs> She'd call the paramedics. <laughs> but the love we have and the place of that initial attraction is far greater. It's far deeper. It's far more significant. Sometimes you feel it. Sometimes you don't feel it. But it's a commitment. And boy, I tell you, as the months go by and then the years go by, 
and you've honored those vows and you've stuck to them, you look back and you thank God. And you look at others who have disregarded what the Bible says and are facing the consequences. No, fairy tale weddings are not really possible. I know we've heard all those stories and, and they lived happily ever after. The better way to say it would be they lived happily even after. <laughs> even after. After what? After marriage. Because they did it God's way. So here's my closing thought. If you're single, don't rush it. Wait on the Lord. Find a godly man or woman. Priority number one. If you're married and you're having troubles, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Ask God for help and try to save that marriage. You know, I do find it interesting that the Lord uses the analogy of a husband's love for a wife to describe his love for the church. He says, love your wife as Christ loves the church. Well, you want to talk about a tall order. But how did Christ love the church? Well, he died on the cross for us. And when did he do it? When we were his best friends? No, the Bible says, while we were still yet sinners, Christ died for us. When we were the enemies of God, shaking our fist in his face, saying, we don't want you, God, that's when Christ died for us, to show his love for us. And one day we realized that. We thought, man, the Lord loves me. He'll forgive me. And, and we put our faith in him. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to this earth on a rescue mission. And he died on the cross in your place and then he rose again from the dead and he'll come and forgive you of your sin. I don't know if you're single or if you're married. Whoever you are, whatever your state, you need God. Everybody needs Christ in their life. And I ask you in closing, is Jesus Christ living inside of you right now? You think some guy's gonna fill the deepest void of your life? You know, one day my prince will come. Get over that. <laughs> you need the prince of peace to come and live in your heart, girls and guys. He's the one who will meet your deepest needs. And he will come and forgive you of your sin and live in your heart. And if you've never asked Jesus Christ to come into your life, why don't you do that right now as we close in prayer? And you can know for certain that you will go to heaven when you die. So let's all bow our heads and everyone praying if you would. Father, I thank you for your word to us. I thank you for your love for us. And I pray for every person watching this message right now. Help them to see their need for Jesus and help them to come to you and believe and be forgiven of all of their sins. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Pastor Greg Laurie with an important word of prayer. And if you'd like to make a change in your relationship with the Lord today, Pastor Greg will help you with that right now. I'd be delighted to listen. If you would like to accept Jesus Christ into your life right now, and by that I mean if you would like your sin forgiven and have the assurance that you will go to heaven when you die, would you pray this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, but I thank you for dying on the cross for my sin and rising again from the dead. I'm sorry for my sin, Lord, and I turn from it now, and I put my faith in you to be my Savior, my Lord, my God, and my friend. Thank you for loving me and calling me and accepting me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Listen, if you just prayed that prayer in a minute, I want you to know on the authority of God's word that Jesus Christ has just come to take residence in your heart. The Bible says these things we write to you that believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. Listen, we want to send you some resources that will help you grow spiritually. So here's Dave with some details. And let me say, God bless you and welcome to the family of God. And those resources Pastor Greg mentioned are all included in something that we call our New Believers Growth Pack. It's a collection of resources that'll explain the basics of the Christian faith and get you started in this new journey with God. Just ask for a New Believers Growth Pack when you call 1-800-PRAY-FOR-ME. That's 1-800-772-936. 
And our team would love to encourage and pray for you too as you start this journey with God. Call 1-800-772-936 today. Next time on A New Beginning, Pastor Greg comes back with even more insight straight from God's Word on how to keep our marriages healthy and on track. Today's message from Pastor Greg Laurie was called Hope for Hurting Marriages. If you'd like to listen again, just download the Vision Christian Media app where it's available as a podcast along with more inspiring Christian content. Just search your app store for Vision Christian Media. Station sponsor. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au. 